you know what I love about CNN? What do you my love favorite about thing? CNN? Whenever there's a hurricane or a disaster, they set we out cover. their fattest and baldest reporters. You ever notice that? <laughs> when there's like a glamorous story, it's it's always Wolf Blitzer. And then when there's like a don't you a, rip a, on Wolf? No, but then when there's like a, a don't. then when there's like some kind of rainstorm, there's one of those poor guys I never heard of chained to a pole in Miami. I tell you what, he has no heart. <laughs> I'm going to say that right now. And uh, he already admitted that uh, CNN gets much better ratings than his show does anyway, guys. So mm -hmm. I hope you take the uh, rest of the new year in. Have a great time. We had a blast out here. And happy new year from all of us here in Los Angeles. Thank you. You took care. By yeah, the way, um, some, of those, um, some of those entertainment shows still underway, Jimmy Buffett and the Eagles, have they all wrapped up? That's right. Yes, that is all wrapped up. That took place down at the Staples Convention Center, and we showed a little bit of the Eagles not too long ago, and uh, that's all uh, wrapped up also. So things are coming down here in the city. No big problems to report. Uh, Y2K, uh, the city is calm. It's, it's gone very well. And uh, Kira, it's a, it's, a, it's a big party city. Uh, any big showbiz party still continuing? Uh, rumor has it down at Paramount Studios, they still got a big shindig going on. I don't know. I'm trying to talk the crew into going down there and checking it out. Otherwise, no, everything's pretty much settled down. Okay, thanks, Kira. Kira Phillips right. in uh, Los Angeles. Now we want to take you to Las Vegas, where Paul Verkamen is standing. Boris Yeltsin resigns, and airlines hijacking ends, and New Year's celebrations begin being with us on this last day of 1999. And our top story of this half hour, Russian President Boris Yeltsin has resigned effective immediately. On national television this morning, Yeltsin said, quote, today on the last day of the outgoing century, I resign. Russia must enter the new millennium with new politicians, with new faces, with new intelligent, strong, energetic people. And we who have been in power for many years must go. Y2K in Beijing, China. Fireworks filled the sky to welcome in the new year. There were ceremonies at the Great Wall of China, complete with a laser show and a traditional dragon dance. A giant marble countdown clock overlooking the wall ticked off the final hours of 1999. There were only limited official celebrations in China because many people there follow the Chinese calendar. The Lunar New Year is in February. <laughs> Japan is ringing in the new year. Thousands of people gathered at one of the largest and oldest temples in Tokyo to hear the midnight watch bell. Monks stage a traditional new year religious ceremony highlighted by a bell ringing at midnight. And seconds later, those balloons with wish-making cards attached were released into the sky. Tokyo also has its own version of New York's Times Square. Crowds packed into a downtown square in front of a huge camp. The city of Seoul, Korea is welcoming the new year with quite a light show and a 12 and a half foot, 21 ton bronze bell. The peace bell includes melted pieces of a Russian helmet, an Israeli rifle and a rusty piece of a U.S. warship. It symbolizes South Korea's yearning for peace and reunification with North Korea. Other celebrations in Seoul include kite flying, a boys and girls choir performance, and traditional music and dance. The old year is gone down under, and we're looking up over Sydney, Australia, as the new year sails in. Event organizers in New York knew that the ball that will drop in Times Square to mark the new year couldn't be just any ball. Not this year, anyway. Gary Tuckman reports. Five, four, three, two, one. Happy New Year! The testing is done. The ball is ready. We believe it will be the biggest party ever in the history of the human race. 
party in Times Square will be the site of the debut of a new New Year's ball made by the Waterford Crystal Company. The ball is literally priceless. It's the largest crystal project that Waterford has ever created. The project began over a year ago at Waterford's factory in Ireland. The ball is six feet in diameter and weighs 1,070 pounds. It has 504 crystal triangles. We've uh, got a pattern on the crystal. It's called the Star of Hope, which we felt was very appropriate for uh, the millennium. The stars have seven points to symbolize the seven continents. The ball is illuminated with 600 light bulbs. And there's 21,000 watts of light inside this ball. It's extremely bright. You're able to see it from half a mile away, roughly. They've been dropping a ball of one kind or another since 1907 in Times Square, but never one as valuable as the one that will ring in the new millennium. It's no wonder it's being treated with such elaborate care. I got some special cleaning fluid for it. Give it a final check. I'm going to make sure everything's OK. And I'm going to give it a big hug and a kiss and make sure it's OK for good luck. The traditional crystal ball is associated with telling the future. But the Waterford crystal ball will ring in the future. Gary Tuckman, CNN, New York. This is a live look at the ball in question. Now, we are celebrating New Year's 24 times in Times Square for each and every time zone, but that ball will only come down once tonight at 11.59 Eastern Time. It will begin at 60-second plunge down the 77-foot flagpole, and then at 12 o'clock midnight Eastern Time, the year 2000 will be ushered into the Eastern Time Zone. The ball officially went up to the top of the pole just before 7 o'clock Eastern Time this morning, and then it will begin coming down. We're talking now a little less than 12 hours the at the same time, but I can tell you we are all very much looking forward to it. This is Gary Tuckman, CNN Live at Times Square in New York City. We now go around the world to Moscow where it has been a memorable day. Russian President Boris Yeltsin's New Year's Eve resignation caught the world by surprise. We go now live to CNN's Eileen O'Connor. She's in the Russian capital where the year 2000 is now less than four hours away. Eileen. We'll be speaking later today at the National Air and Space Museum to which you are invited. And We've I been listening to First Lady Hillary Rodham Clinton, also President Clinton, as they supervise the closing of a time capsule in Washington, so D.C., among some of the items that will be going into that time capsule, among many, Ray Charles sunglasses, trumpet that belonged to Louis Armstrong, and also a cell phone. So as I open that in later years, I'll see some things that represent life in this century in the United States. And that's going to do it for this part of the coverage. I'm Darren Kagan for Jim Clancy at CNN World Headquarters in Atlanta. Our coverage of Millennium as it moves around the world will continue up next with Natalie Allen and John Mann. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Thames. Well, many, many people are expected there tonight. Some two million people are expected to be out at the street parties by the Thames. Here at the Dome, there are expected to be 10,000 people, invited guests, uh, cabinet ministers, you heard the Queen, Prince Philip, members of the royal family, but also members of the community who have been awarded tickets to the Millennium Dome celebrations based on their community service. You can see people coming in. They've been starting to come in for the last hour or so. Most of them have had to come by public transport. They've come out of a brand new London tube station, underground railway station, and they're beginning to fill the inside of the Millennium Dome. Right now, we're going back now to Riz and Bobby in Atlanta. All right, Christian, the party is underway in London, and welcome to our combined Millennium edition of CNN's Talk Back Live and CNN International's q and I'm Riz Khan, Bobby Batista, and I hosting together as we watch the dawn of a new year around the globe. A new year, not yet the new millennium, though, according to our first guest, Sir Arthur Clarke. Yes, Sir Arthur is the science fiction writer and futurist who brought us the unsettling vision of HAL, the computer run amok in 2001, The Space Odyssey. CNN's global coverage of Millennium 2000 is brought to you by Morgan Stanley Dean Witter. We measure success one investor at a time. of Millennium 2000, only on CNN.